of you. We were dealing with uh, the pile foundations. In that one, in the last class, we saw that what are the various tests that uh, are to be required to be done in situ uh, as far as the estimation of pile load carrying capacity under compression is concerned. In that sequence, we saw that two type of tests were there that is uh, initial tests and then the routine tests. Initial tests were carried out on test piles and routine tests were carried out on working piles. Test piles were the piles which were not taking any part in sharing the load which is coming from the superstructure. However, working piles were doing the same. In that order, when we proceeded further, we started our discussion with cyclic pile load uh, tests. In that one, we saw that the only difference was that uh, from the earlier case was uh, that uh, the loading as well as the unloading has been done simultaneously in case of cyclic plate load test. So, what are the various features of this cyclic pile load test that we will see in this particular lecture. So, the first is that when a pile is loaded by an axial load Q at ground level, initially the applied load will be distributed as friction load within certain length say L1 of the pile measured from its top. See when we're, we were discussing the concept of skin friction resistance and point bearing resistance, then also I explained you that how the load transfer mechanism takes place as soon as the load from the superstructure starts coming from the uh, superstructure to the pile. So what happens when the pile is uh, getting subjected to this load from the superstructure that is this let us say the axial load Q at the ground level in this case, then what happens is that before going to point bearing resistance, first it mobilizes the skin friction resistance along certain length of the pile. See at one instance it the friction resistance does not get mobilized all along the length of pile shaft. Earlier uh, some small length of the pile incorporates this resistance. However, with the increase of this load, this length goes on increasing towards the pile tip. So, as the load is increased, greater lengths of pile shaft will be involved in mobilizing frictional resistance to resist applied load. This in the same lines we can uh, explain this. It is only after the full length of the pile develops frictional resistance at a certain stage of loading that a part of load is transferred to the soil at base as point load. See when the load is coming on the pile from the superstructure, first it is getting mobilized friction resistance along one part some particular length of the pile. As that particular load from the superstructure goes on increasing, the length on which this frictional resistance is getting mobilized will also go on increasing and one situation will come where the load which is coming from the superstructure to the pile will become just equal to the skin friction which is getting mobilized that is the ultimate skin friction resistance and once the this uh, total ultimate uh, total skin friction along the total length of the pile has been mobilized for the any further increase in the load from the superstructure that will get uh, resisted by the point bearing at the base um, of the pile tip. So, with the increase in load at top after this particular stage both frictional and point load will increase. The frictional load attains a maximum value at a certain load level and will not further increase upon increase in Q. See once it has attained the that particular value which is resisting all, all along the pile shaft length then beyond that that value cannot increase. So, uh, this there is no increase in frictional component uh, once this ultimate skin friction value has been achieved. So, point load is still keeps on increasing till the soil at the base fails in local shear. 
obviously whatever load will be coming if you go on increasing once this has attained that ultimate skin friction resistance obviously it will then be going to the point bearing resistance till the resistance of the soil at which is lying at the base of the pile tip. Van Wiele in 1957 has postulated that the point load QP increases linearly with the elastic compression of the soil at the base. It is this principle that is used in separating the frictional load from the point load as far as cyclic pile load test is concerned. As I mentioned you earlier that this cyclic pile load test is carried out in the situation where it is necessary to separate out the skin friction resistance and point bearing resistance. So, Van Wiele in 1957 gave a postulation that this QP increases linearly with the elastic compression of the soil at the base. So, what happens is that this means that to know this value of QP, we need to establish a relationship between QP and the elastic settlement of the soil at the base because they have the linear relationship that is they in and this QP increases linearly with uh, this elastic compression. So, we need to know this elastic compression of the soil at the base of the pile. How we do that that we will see in subsequent slides. So, the total settlement of the pile obtained from a pile load test comprises of two components one is its elastic settlement which I am representing as SE and another is plastic settlement which is uh, noted uh, which I am noting by SP. So, this total settlement S will become the summation of these two that is elastic settlement of pile plus plastic settlement of pile and in expression form that becomes S is equal to SE plus SP. The elastic settlement it is again having two components that is first is due to the elastic recovery of pile material and then the another one is elastic recovery of soil at the base of pile that is SE prime. So, total settlement of the pile is having two component one is elastic settlement of pile another is plastic settlement of pile. Uh, pile further this elastic settlement of pile has two component one is elastic recovery of pile material that is let us say if it is concrete then elastic recovery of the concrete if it is of timber elastic recovery of that timber material plus whatever is the soil lying at the base its elastic recovery that is say SE prime which I am calling in this particular uh, case. In cyclic loading procedure of pile load test, it is easy to obtain plast elastic and plastic settlement at every stage of loading. See, you when you are loading, you are noting down the deformation corresponding to each load increment. When you are unloading, you are noting down the recovery or whatever is the corresponding deformation of the pile in that particular process. Simply you can plot load settlement curve and then you can get very easily that what exactly is the elastic recovery at every stage of loading. How it is done I will show you a pictorial view in the subsequent slide then it will become more clear to you. If the load on the pile is greater than a particular value say QS a part of load will be transferred to soil at the base of the pile and the rest to around uh, rest to the soil which is around the pile. See what happens is once this load Q is coming on the pile. First the skin friction is getting mobilized. When this skin friction is getting mobilized along the full length of the pile shaft in that case I am calling that as ultimate skin friction resistance that is what is this QS value. So, when the load on the pile is becoming more than this particular value some of the load will be shared by point bearing also. So, that is what is written here that a part of the load which is applied to the pile will be shared by this skin friction and remaining part will be the uh, to the soil at the base of the pile. You can see here this is a typical load settlement plot from uh, cyclic pile load test. This figure I have taken from uh, the relevant IS code. So, it is available there, but I uh, will just show you 
that you see this is what is the first loading cycle where this load on the pile top is q1 then once once it attains at this particular load this is the total settlement from 0 to this particular point here on y axis it is settlement so this much is the total settlement as far as this loading is concerned then as i told you that in cycle uh, cyclic pile load test loading and unloading both takes place simultaneously so after this loading part unloading is done along this path let us say that unloading is following this particular path so what is happening if the behavior of the pile material is purely elastic then during the unloading process the settlement which is coming out to be this much here this point should have been at zero that in you, you know that for any elastic material if it is within elastic limit if you uh, release the stresses which are uh, which have been applied to that particular uh, thing then it attains its original position here it is not doing so because it is not following this particular path but it is following this path so which which tells us that it's not purely elastic material there is some plastic uh, nature also that is why the total settlement of the pile comprises of two component one is elastic component and another is plastic component so corresponding to this load q1 the settlement which was attained was this much and when the unloading has been done it is coming down to this one that means that this much part has been recovered so the point from here to here which has been recovered this particular part is known as the elastic settlement of pile for the first uh, loading cycle however the remaining one is the plastic settlement which cannot be recovered now from here the next increment of the load has been applied to the pile that is this one let us say that that load increment corresponds to the value q2 now for this q2 again you will be getting some of the deformation and when the unloading is done let us say that it is following this particular path this path okay so what what is the recovery that is from where it is started so this this becomes the elastic recovery that is corresponding to this maximum settlement whatever it has recovered so this becomes the elastic recovery that is se2 for the second cycle and remaining one becomes the plastic settlement of the pile and similarly um, for all the loading uh, cycles you can find out once you plot this load versus settlement curve you can easily estimate that what is the elastic recovery of the pile the load transferred to base will compress the soil at the base of the pile obviously when uh, when the uh, load which is coming on the pile is getting resisted by the pile shaft and then it is coming to the pile base so uh, the load uh, obviously will be transferring to base will try to compress the soil which is lying at the base of the pile tip so hence for q is greater than q s that is then only some point bearing will be mobilized your q will become q f plus q p this is what we have already studied the total settlement of the pile s at any load level q can be written as s is equal to delta l plus s b what is delta l is the compression of the pile and s b is the compression of soil at the base see whatever is the vertical settlement will be taking place will be due to the compression of the soil which is lying at the base plus the compression of the pile itself the total will comprise of the settlement of the pile so and then your sp can be written as se prime plus sb prime where se prime you have seen is the elastic compression of soil at base sb prime is plastic compression of soil at base so your total settlement which was delta l plus sp sb if you replace by this particular expression so the total settlement will become delta l plus se prime plus sb prime 
further we have seen that the total settlement of the pile comprises of two component that is elastic settlement of pile which we denoted as SE and plastic settlement of the pile which was SP. So, we have this further expression that S is equal to SE plus SP. Now, let us equate these two because these two are the same quantities. It is just that we are talking in two different uh, aspects, but magnitude wise they have to be same. So, here see what we are doing is we are trying to find out this delta L because once we know this delta L which is uh, the uh, this one uh, your compression of the pile and we have seen that your QP is linearly uh, function of this compression of the pile. So, to know that value of QP this delta L has to be known and that is why we are doing all these exercise. So, from here we can find out this SE prime which is equal to your SP minus SB prime. See, I am combining the plastic component of the uh, settlement together plus SE minus delta L. So, the elastic compression at uh, of soil at the base SE prime can be computed if you see here it can be computed if all these quantities are known that is SP, SB prime, SE and delta L. Okay. So, from that uh, cyclic plate load test data we can estimate this SP and SE directly, but how about this SB prime and delta L how we can find that out. So, SB prime is one component of the plastic total plastic settlement which is SP the other component being the plastic settlement of pile material. And then if it is assumed that the plastic settlement of the pile material is quite negligible then in that case I can say that SP becomes equal to SB prime. So, we can get SP, SE and then SP prime also which I can assume to be equal to SP in case the uh, plastic settlement of pile material is negligible. In that case your SE prime will get resulted into SE minus delta L. You see here that you had four terms this is known this is known from uh, the cyclic pile load test data then this and this was the problem. So, this I assume that it is equal to SP prime. So, the resulting settlement that is SE prime will become SE minus delta L. Since this SE is known SE prime can be determined if delta L is computed. So, now how to calculate this delta L? Delta L is given by the expression Q minus QF by 2 into L by AE, where your Q is the load on the pile, QF is frictional load, L is the length of the pile, A is area of cross section of the pile that is average area. Usually the pile is provided uh, which, which are provided usually they are uniform in cross section, but if it is not uniform then you have to take the average area of the cross section. And E becomes your modulus of elasticity of pile material in case if it is concrete um, that will be the E uh, Young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity for concrete in case of timber it is uh, it will be of timber in case of steel it will be of steel. Now, this delta L cannot be determined from the ever mentioned expression till the frictional load QF is known. You see here this is what is the expression. What we are doing we know only Q we want that QP and QF to be known separately. So, to know this delta L we need to know this QF separately. So, how we can do that that is being explained here that an indirect approach is adopted to estimate this QP and QF separately. So, some of the steps that we need to follow to know or to separate out these two um, components. So, the involved steps are first is that assuming that there is no compression in the pile that is the compression of the pile I am assuming to be 0 which is delta L that is delta L to be equal to 0. We plot a graph between total elastic recovery at pile head which becomes SE prime now and the total load on the pile top 
which is shown by curve 1 in subsequent figure. So, in that case your SE prime will become SE which you can find out easily from the cyclic pile load test data as whatever is the settlement which has been recovered during the unloading process that is your SE as I explained you uh, with the help of earlier figure. So, you can see here that this is uh, this is a figure which has been taken from IS 2911 part 4 1979. So, uh, this is what is uh, uh, the title is analysis of cyclic pile load test data for separation of skin friction and point resistance. I will uh, just read out what are the things in this particular figure. Uh, on x axis the load on the pile uh, top has been plotted in tonnes. However, on y axis it is elastic compression of subgrade in millimeters. So, what happens is that for the first one we are assuming that there is no compression in the pile that is delta L is equal to 0 then what we can do we can plot the curve in with elastic recovery of the pile head and the pile load on the top. This corresponds to a curve 1 you see here this is what is your curve 1 when you are assuming that no compression in the pile material ok. This is what is your curve 1 then what needs to be done is that draw a straight line parallel to a straight portion of the curve 1 to divide the load into two parts and obtain approximate values of point resistance QP and skin friction resistance QF. Let us once again come to this particular figure. This is what is Q uh, curve 1. What the second point says is I have to draw a parallel line which is uh, parallel to this straight portion of the curve. So, you see here the later part of the curve which is a straight line. I draw a line parallel to this one which is passing from the origin. Okay. So, this much part will be represented by the point resistance and the remaining part between this, uh, this parallel line and your actual curve will give me the part which is shared by the skin friction. So, you see you take any particular uh, compression of the sub, uh, subgrade, you take this particular part which is the point bearing that is at this particular level you see this is what is the point bearing and the remaining is skin friction at that particular point. So, this is how approximately we are separating out QP and QF. Now, using the approximate value of skin friction QF for different load levels compute corresponding elastic compression of the pile. You remember that elastic compression of the pile delta L was equal to Q minus QF by 2 into L by AE. So, there QF was not known. So, earlier we assumed that delta L is equal to 0 and then approximately we found out that what is the value of QF. Now, once we know this approximate value of QF, we go for another iteration that is assuming this approximate value of QF and putting in that particular expression for delta L, we can estimate the value of delta L at different load levels. So, you see here this is what is your point bearing and the remaining part is the skin friction. Since earlier we do not know that what exactly is the case, so delta L has been assumed to be 0 and this curve 1 has been plotted. Then a line parallel to the straight part of this particular curve has been drawn in this case. Like this, the, the intercept of between this axis and this particular parallel line gives me the value of point resistance and the remaining part gives me the approximate value of skin friction resistance. Now, let us see what are the uh, further steps. Once we know this delta L at different load levels, obtain we can obtain the corresponding values of elastic compressions of soil at the base of pile that is SE prime 
it was uh, because while we were finding out that SE prime the problem was that how we can calculate the value of delta L. So now we have the value of delta L so we can easily compute the value um, this uh, elastic compression of the soil at base. So with this new value we can plot a new curve to that is uh, using these new values of SE prime against corresponding loads. I will show you that how exactly it is there you see here this is uh, once you know uh, this this was the curve 1 you can see here that knowing the next two values you have this particular curve which is curve 2 you see these new new values so the curve 2 has been plotted then in the similar manner as we did for the case of curve 1 here also new straight line which is parallel to the straight portion of this curve 2 has been drawn from the origin. Then uh, you can separate out corresponding uh, QP and QF value that is point bearing resistance and skin friction resistance in this case also. And then you can repeat the step from 3 and 4 to obtain the new value of SE prime and then you can again plot another new curve. Uh, that is let us say 3 in this particular figure that I will be showing right now uh, in this particular figure if you see this is what is curve 2 you draw a line which is parallel to this particular curve you see here this line this is the one that is dotted line so this much particular part will be point resistance and this one will be skin friction resistance so again now you have got new new set of values of QF. So correspondingly you can find out the new set of values of delta L and subsequently SE prime. Then with these new values what you can do you can plot this curve 3. You see here this is what is your curve 3 ok and if you can see here that curve 2 and curve 3 they are so close to each other and when you draw a line parallel to the straight portion of this curve 3 that is this firm line if you can see here in this figure that this line which was parallel corresponding to curve 2 and the line parallel corresponding to curve 3 they are quite close to each other. So usually this third iteration gives me the uh, proper value. So this process may be repeated till reasonably accurate values of QP and QF uh, they are obtained. It has been seen that the third trial gives sufficiently accurate values for all practical purposes. So first, first trial was done using delta L is equal to 0 and then approximate value of QF was estimated. From that approximate value another set of delta L value was estimated and then another set of SE value was estimated and again that the load settlement curve was plotted that was curve 2 and from there uh, the line parallel to the straight portion of the curve 2 was drawn and then repeating the earlier steps which was followed for the curve 1 um, you could found out that what is the uh, point bearing and the skin friction resistance in corresponding to this curve 2 also and then using the new set of values of QF and then you can uh, find out the new set of values of delta L and SE prime and it has been seen that third trial gives you um, reasonably accurate values of QP and QF for all practical purposes. Then to obtain the safe pile capacity a factor of safety of 2 on the ultimate friction resistance and 2.5 on the ultimate point bearing resistance can be applied. Usually uh, for all practical purposes we usually apply uh, the uh, exactly the same uh, uh, factor of safety for both skin friction resistance and point bearing resistance. However, in case where it becomes necessary to get QP that is point bearing resistance and QS that is skin friction resistance separately there in that case you can use factor of safety of 2 for uh, um, ultimate skin friction resistance and 2.5 for uh, ultimate point bearing resistance. 
Now let us try to see with the help of an example that how this uh, data from cyclic pile load test uh, can be interpreted and analyzed. So let us try to see with the help of an example that how this cyclic pile load test data can be interpreted and analyzed further to uh, estimate the load carrying capacity of the pile. So the statement of the example goes like this that the following data refers to a cyclic pile load test carried out on a 300 millimeter diameter 10 meter long pile. Plot the load set settlement curve and estimate the allowable load of the pile as per Indian standard code of practice. So this is what is the data which has been given you in the problem that you see here load on the pile top it is 150, 200, 250, 300, 400, 500 and 600 and then total settlement of the pile top uh, corresponding to 150 kilonewton is 1.45, then 2.25, 2.75, 3.60, 5.75, 10.75 10 and 30 millimeter. Then net settlement of the pile top is 0 0.4, 0 0.65, 0 0.8, 1, 1.7, 5.5, 5 and 22.8 mm. Now this total settlement of the pile top is given and net settlement is also given. So from this one we can find out that what is the total settlement corresponding to various loads and which have been shown in this particular slide that you see the load on the pile top this is what is given total settlement is also given net settlement is given so elastic settlement you can find out that total settlement minus net settlement. So from uh, 0 to 150 corresponding to this 150 kilonewton the elastic settlement is 1.05 for 200 it is 1.6 then 1.95 you see 2.75 minus 0.8 is 1.95 corresponding to 250 kilonewton. Similarly you can see here the 10.75 minus 5.25 is 5.50 which corresponds to the elastic settlement to uh, this load of 500 kilonewton on pile top. So this is load on pile top in kilonewton settlement it has been plotted which follows these uh, this particular curve. So it has been uh, asked in the question that you have to plot this load settlement curve. So this is how you can plot the load settlement curve. First you find out the uh, elastic settlement and then correspondingly simply using uh, maybe graph sheet or this I have done in excel there you can plot this load settlement curve. Then as we discussed in the previous lecture that what are the different guidelines given in Indian standard code and different uh, engineers or research workers also. So here this I am dealing with because you have to find out this allowable load on the pile as per Indian standard code of practice. So whatever are the guidelines which are available in uh, IS code that you have to take care of here in this case that as per IS 2911 part 4 1979 the allowable load on pile is given by two third the load causing 12 mm settlement. So you see here go back to this particular curve see it is very important to draw first this load settlement curve once you have drawn this half of the work is over. So 12 mm settlement was given since no specification has been given in this particular problem so you have to consider 12 mm of the settlement. So here 12 mm settlement will be somewhere here you go here read accordingly. So you will see that it will be somewhere here in this and that load is 500. So two third of the load causing 12 mm settlement. So from this particular curve you can read that what is the load at 12 mm settlement. It is coming out to be 500 in this case. So two third of 500 will become 333.33 kilonewton. Then the second guideline was that 50% of the load causing total settlement equal to 10% of the pile diameter. 
so in this case your pile diameter is 300 mm so 10% of that will become 30 mm so in present case it is 30 mm so whatever is the load corresponding to this 30 mm settlement you have to take 50% of that as allowable settlement so you see here the settlement correspond uh, settlement of 30 mm you go back to this particular figure this 30 mm you take draw a line parallel to this axis so 30 mm you come here and then read this value corresponding to uh, this particular point where the uh, line intersects this particular load settlement curve and then you can see that here that is you are getting a value of 600 kilonewton corresponding to a settlement of 30 mm in this particular case. So Q allowable from this particular consideration will be half of this 600 which is 300 kilonewton and as I told you earlier that out of these different considerations you have to pick the minimum value which you are getting. So from one consideration you are getting 333.33 kilonewton from another one you are getting 300 kilonewton. So the minimum is 300 kilometer, uh, kilonewton and so you can safely say that a smaller of these two values is 300 kilonewton and hence it is the allowable load on the pile. So you saw that when we were discussing theoretically it was looking lit, uh, little bit difficult but if you follow them uh, properly then it is not at all difficult when you once you draw load settlement cur curve after that things become very easy simply you have to follow whatever are the guidelines which are given in IS code or maybe if you are uh, using let us say if you are in some other country uh, and uh, trying to find out this allowable load so whatever is the relevant code in that particular country you pick that there will be some guidelines exactly on the similar lines to estimate this allowable load on the piles Sim simply you have to follow those guidelines pick the minimum value whatever that you get from different consideration and that will be the all allowable load on the pile. Now this was all about that how you can uh, estimate the load carrying capacity using pile load test. We have already seen the static pile load formulae then we saw pile load test. Now coming to the third method that how we can estimate the load carrying capacity of pile under compression. The third one is pile driving formula. As we are we see that here this word static has been used and you know that when we were discussing the two types of uh, method of installation of pile one is driving the pile another is by boring and in that driving one we saw that it is done uh, with the help of mechanical hammering or giving vibrations and all. So here basically dynamics comes into picture. In the first case it was a static pile load uh, uh, formula. However, in this uh, third one uh, usually dynamics that what exactly is the type of hammer, what is the weight of the hammer, what is the efficiency of the uh, total machine that you are using for hammering the pile for driving then uh, what exactly is the ex uh, eccentricity and all other things that you need to um, uh, see and let us see that what are the various aspects of uh, this particular type to know the um, load carrying capacity of pile. They are sometimes they are termed as dynamic pile formulae also why it is so you will be appreciating this particular name after uh, studying little bit detail of this particular type so these formulae are based on the laws governing the impact of elastic bodies i hope that uh, you are familiar with the coefficient of restitution that you must uh, must have studied in your btech first year class uh, while you studied your applied mechanics uh, and that engineering mechanics uh, thing. So the input energy of a hammer blow is equated to the work done in overcoming the resistance of the ground to the penetration of the pile. So this is what is the main principle on basis of which this dynamic pile formula has been 
derived we will not be going into detail of the derivation of this particular formula however it is very much necessary for you to know that what exactly is this formula what are the various terms which are used in this particular formula what are their physical meaning that how exactly they represent any physical parameter so you should always remember that in the case of pile driving formula it is what is the mechanical work and this particular principle that input energy of a hammer blow is equated to the work done in overcoming the resistance of the ground to the penetration of the pile it is equated and this is the basic principle of the dynamic pile formula allowance is made for losses of energy due to elastic contractions of pile pile cap and subsoil and losses due to inertia of pile you see when the energy is being imparted from the hammer to the pile as such we say that the whatever energy we give the uh, there is conservation of the energy of the uh, that particular law is there so whatever is the energy that you give either it will just dissipate and some of the uh, some of the energy will get dissipate and rest all will be taken by the pile in resisting its movement uh, uh, with uh, in the ground so uh in that particular process when the hammering takes place there are losses of energy due to the elastic contraction of the pile that means that we just have to take into account the energy which is being used by the pile for the resisting the vertical movement so whatever is the energy losses some allowance in this particular formula has been done usually two formulas we'll be discussing first one is engineering news formula second is modified hele formula so let us first discuss uh, the salient features or what exactly is this engineering news formula it's a very well known uh, that enr we call that in uh, abbreviations that is this is the simplest and the most popular of the dynamic pile formula the dynamic resistance of the soil say qu is assumed to be the ultimate pile load capacity in this particular formula so equating the energy input and work done as i told you that for all the dynamic formula you have to keep this in mind that whatever is the energy that you are imparting through hammering to the pile that has to be equated to the work done by the pile against the movement in the ground so exactly on this that similar principle equating the energy input and work done so your input energy is q u into s prime is equal to w into h from which the allowable pile load q a is expressed as w into h divided by this f s plus c now what are these uh, differ which is falling through a height of h s is real set per blow c is a empirical factor allowing reduction in theoretical set due to energy loss as i told you that some or the other compensation or allowance has been uh, will be uh, done as far as the loss of energy due to the dissipation in uh, let us say there is some compression of the pile itself some uh, dissipation of energy due to the soil which is surrounding that it is done so this empirical factor c takes care of those uh, allowances f is factor of safety which is usually taken as 6 you can see here that such a high factor of safety has been taken into account however in case of static pile load formula that was of the order of 2.5 and uh, in case uh, of cyclic pile load test data uh, while analyzing um, the test data it was uh, 2 for uh, skin friction resistance and 2.5 for point bearing resistance however in this case in case of dynamic uh, pile formula this factor of safety is usually taken as 6 so the theoretical set which is s prime is equal to s plus c 
in metric units how you can find out that what exactly is this empirical parameter and uh, using this factor of safety to be equal to 6. So, in metric units the equation may be written as for drop hammers. Uh, see as I told you that we will not be going into much detail of the mechanical aspect of uh, this particular dynamic test. However, we will be con concentrating on that how we can estimate the allowable load carrying capacity using these formula. So, uh, you must be knowing from uh, some of the courses that you have done as far as mechanical engineering is concerned that what exactly do we mean by drop hammers or single acting steam hammers etc. So, in case the drop hammers uh, has been used while driving the pile Q A that is allowable load capacity of the pile becomes W H divided by 6 S plus 2.5. However, in case of single acting steam hammers, it is WH by 6 S plus 0.25, where QA and W they are expressed in kilogram, it is not in Newtons, it is kilogram, H is fall of hammer or length of piston stroke. In case of single acting steam hammers, it, is, it will be length of piston stroke in centimeters. S is the final set in centimeter per blow. What exactly do we mean by this S that we are calling as set? It is usually taken as average penetration for the last 5 blows of a drop hammer or 20 blows of a steam hammer. So, let us say that you are going on hammering on the particular pile. So, how you can estimate this set is that that this final set is usually taken to be equal to average penetration for the last 5 blows of a drop hammer and in case you are using single acting steam hammers in that case last 20 blows uh, I mean corresponding to last 20 blows what exactly is the average penetration that is being taken as uh, S and its unit is centimeters per blow. The allowable pile load is also expressed in another form which is this 166.64 E divided by S plus 2.54 where these uh, QA it is in kilonewton that is allowable pile load you will get in kilonewton. E is energy per blow in kilojoules that is Kj. S is average penetration in millimeter per blow for the final 150 mm of driving. The minimum permissible value of S is equal to 1.25 mm. So, let us say that in your case uh, this S value that is average penetration per blow for final 150 mm of driving is working out to be more than 1.25 then in that case you have to restrict it to 1.25. So, the permissible value is 1.25. If it is uh, working out to be less than that, you have to take this 1.25 and if it is coming out to be more, you can go ahead with that value. Now, due to the advantage that pile capacity can be conveniently worked out during driving and also due to its simplicity, engineering news formula is extensively used internationally. You have seen that it is a very simple formula, you just require to have weight of the uh, hammer, height of its fall, what exactly is the type of the hammer that you are using, its final set and then simply you substitute all these values into that uh, simple formula and you get a rough estimate of allowable load on the pile and due to these features of this engineering news formula it is very popular and used extensively all over the world. Now let us try to see I told you that there are two formulas one was engineering news formula another one is modified Hille formula. So let us try to see that what exactly are the salient features of modified Hille formula how we can use this particular formula to estimate the allowable load on the pile. It is considered to be superior to engineering news formula as it takes into account various energy losses during driving in a more realistic manner. 
although in engineering news formula we used an empirical factor that is c uh, with a combination of final set of a, a, in engineering news formula however there it was empirical but this in modified hille formula we take more realistic and more logical uh, factors as far as the losses of the energy in different aspects are concerned so again the principle basic principle remaining the same that whatever is the energy to be supplied to the pile that is equal to the work done so here also equating the available energy with useful work done and losses r is equal to w h eta divided by s plus c by 2 where this c is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 and if you substitute that this r will become w h eta divided by s plus c1 plus c2 plus c3 by 2 now let us try to have a look that what are these particular parameters how they can be estimated or what is the recommended values of these uh, parameters where your r is ultimate driving resistance in tonnes so you, you see since these are the dynamic formula is every time the units are changing so you have to keep a track that in which formula which type of which type of unit and uh, which particular system of the unit that you have to follow so this r is ultimate driving resistance in tonnes the safe load is estimated by dividing the ultimate driving resistance by a factor of safety of 2.5 in earlier case the factor of safety that is in engineering news formula the factor of safety was taken to be 6 however in this case once you estimate the value of this r you have to simply divide it by factor of safety of 2.5 to get the safe load which can be uh, there on the pile w is weight of hammer in tonnes then eta is the efficiency of the blow that represents the ratio of energy after impact to the striking energy of the ram so eta is the efficiency we will not be uh, actually the thing is that uh, whatever is the type of uh, uh, hammer that you will be using Uh, usually manufacturer provides us uh, this particular value of the efficiency however if you go by mechanic mechanical principles then this eta has a definition which is the ratio of energy after the impact to the striking energy of the ram which is usually the uh, machine specific so whatever is the type of machine that you are using for hammering the uh, with that particular uh, machine this value will be supplied now what are the other parameters and uh, what are the main features of this particular formula how you can utilize this this all we will be discussing in the next class so in this class we discuss that how you can uh, go ahead with the pile load test then we started with the cyclic pile load test in that case the only difference was that the loading and the unloading was done simultaneously then we saw that how the elastic recovery can be obtained and how you can uh, differentiate or separate out the two component of the load that is point bearing resistance and skin uh, friction resistance how you can separate them out using the cyclic pile load test data then with the help of an example we saw that how this pile load test data can be used to estimate the allowable load or the safe load capacity of the pile you saw that there are few guidelines that you need to follow and then once you draw the load settlement curve it becomes so simple to uh, consider all those criteria and then decide upon that what should be the allowable load on the pile and then we started with the third method that is uh, the dynamic pile formula uh, to estimate the load carrying capacity of the pile in that one i told you that we will be discussing two types of two formulas one was engineering news formula and another was modified hille formula
In case of engineering news formula, we saw that since it was very simple, there was no complicacy. So that is why because of its simplicity only it has been used worldwide and then we started with modified Hille formula. We will be continuing with this particular topic in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.